HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll take you to the Hopkinton Police Fire and Senior Center Annual Bocce Throwdown. We have the Bay Path Humane Society Pet of the Week. Book author John Hodgson talked about his new book at the library. And we have the latest Hiller Sports Update. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. This past Saturday featured a fun-filled day of activities in Hopkinton. To start off the day, the 44th Annual Poly Arts Festival took place at the Hopkinton Town Common, and they also held the official closing of Center School. Former students of Center School had the opportunity to have one last look before the official closing. But it's, to me, it's, it's old memories, it's good memories. It was a pitch perfect day on the Hopkinton Town Common for the 44th Annual Poly Arts Festival. HCAM News caught up with some of the vendors. Today, this is the Marathon Quilters Guild booth. Um, I'm here to promote our show that we have going on this weekend at the Center for the Arts in Hopkinton. And it's today and tomorrow, 10 to 5 and also to promote our guild. So if you're looking to join a guild, we have the information here. And you can go out to our website at marathonquilters.com and find out about us. During the Hopkinton Family Fun Day at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, the Marathon Quilters Guild hosted today's show featuring some lovely work to raise money for charitable causes. This weekend we are having um, the Common Threads Quilt Show that's being hosted by Marathon Quilters Guild. There are about 113 items here and our theme is Common Threads. It's essentially finding all of the uh, commonalities among people. We thought that it is a good time to, instead of focusing on how we're different and um, how we disagree to come together and find out what we have in common. Down at the high school and middle school fields, the annual lumberjack show took place, allowing those of all ages to test out their skills. All right, so another beautiful day at Hopkinton Family Day, and you got the uh, Lumberjack Show taking place once again. Uh, seems like a good turnout today. How's everything going? Good. The weather, of course, is in our favor. A little bit hot, but you know what? Remember back to the 300th anniversary, we had ice pellets in the air. So we'll take this any day. We got them lined up. The axe throwing, of course, is always the most popular because everybody thinks they're going to nail it, and then they get over there in reality. But there's some good people over there. The sawing events, we got a couple little kids events. Try to get something for little kids in lumberjack competition is tough. So it's good, we've got a good turnout. It's been steady, it's coming down little at a time. So we're happy with it, yeah, it's a good turnout. At the high school fields, Hopkinton Family Day took place featuring activities for the kids, food trucks, live music, and a whole lot more. Hey, welcome to um, Hopkinton Family Day. This is great, another great turnout, a fabulous weather. We had bad weather all week, and now we've got this great weather. I'm getting ready to uh, go in the dunk tank for a half an hour. That's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun. It's just great it's having the community get together on a day like this, and it's, uh, it's, it's what we always pray for, good weather and uh, good friends and a good community. All around the world.
very much. Colin and Libby Hurley here, give them a little hand. Come on. All right, so another uh, great event uh, this year. A big turnout. Couldn't ask for uh, better weather. Could you just talk about how the day has gone? Uh, very well, very smoothly. Uh, a lot of planning. Actually, it's uh, been a year. This past year, it's been meeting monthly. And not so much me, but so many members of the Friends of Hopkinton have been fabulous. Ann Click, who's been leading the charge, uh, just phenomenal. I can't, I can't say how much she's been great, as well as all the committee members. Um, but it's all led up to this day. It's warm. It's nice. Uh, very pleased with the turnout, but uh, the best is yet to come with some more entertainment and, of course, the finale of the fireworks. So I would say it's going very well. Excellent. And uh, how do you think having all these events on the same day with Poly Arts, the Lumberjack Show, and this have worked out? Uh, at first, we, th we a little thought that might be a challenge, but uh, you know, it's it's worked out. You know, we've uh, talked with people in the past, and it really hasn't interfered from what they do, and they haven't taken away from what we do. So uh, we like to think we're kind of helping each other out, working you know off of each other. So uh, yeah, it really hasn't been a problem, mm -hmm. thankfully. After a tremendous day of many fun events. The evening was capped off by an amazing fireworks show. Book author John Hodgson spoke about his new book at the Hopkinton Public Library. His new book is the biography of Richard Potter. Richard Potter was born in Hopkinton to an enslaved African mother and white father. He rose to the status of a world-class performer and entertainer performing magic and ventriloquism. In front of a packed house at the Hopkinton Library, the Hopkinton Historical Society presented book author John Hodgson to speak about his new biography about Hopkintonian Richard Potter. Richard Potter ended up becoming a world-class performer and entertainer performing magic and ventriloquism. For Richard Potter, that means the people we entertained when they were children in the teens and 20s were dying out in the 70s and 80s and 90s, and that's how long his reputation lasted. Uh, a second point of this is that he was, as I believe most of you know, he was a popular entertainer. He was a ventriloquist, the first American-born ventriloquist. He was a superb magician. He also did recitations. He did song and dance routines. He did uh, little uh, excerpts from dramas. It was quite a variety show. All right, Richard Potter was the most famous entertainer in America 200 years ago, but we've lost sight, or we never had sight until the last 20, 30 years of the importance of that fact. Second, as most of you probably know, Richard Potter was a black man. That's an amazing juxtaposition. The most famous entertainer in America 200 years ago was also a black man. You will find no acknowledgement of this in the history of the African-American experience in America, which is mind-blowing. Uh, in both of these respects, in his degree of fame and exposure as an entertainer, in his degree of accomplishment as a black man, Richard Potter was literally off the charts. He has no peer in either of these respects. There was no black man in America who was as famous as he, who was as uh, successful in a uh, business sense as he. Uh, I argue at the very end of my book that, that Richard Potter was actually highly influential in unappreciated ways uh, in the perception of blacks in America. I'm not gonna have time to go into that today, but if you're interested in that aspect of his story, I would point you there. We'll just Insert the little excerpt from the book right now since it fits in here aptly enough. And I think you already have enough background to appreciate a few of the illusions here. 
just to give you a, a flavor of the, uh, the book itself. What of young Richard's life during these 10 years? These are the first 10 years of his life, 1783 to 1793. Old later anecdotes indicate that he was a favorite of the household. We can assume that it was Mary Swain who taught him to read, since we know that she taught his older sister, Julia. Nason, that's Charles Nason, who did the biographies and a, uh, uh, an extensive manuscript history of Hopkins. Nason also says, clearly on Julia's authority, that Potter went to school in Hopkinton. This week, Baypath Humane Society introduced us to a playful puppy named Finley who is available for adoption. Here is a look at this week's Baypath Humane Society Pet of the Week. All right, so who do we got with us today? This is Finley, and um, he is very much, he's about 10 months old, and he's very much still a puppy. He's learning manners and um, got a lot of energy, and he jumps around a lot. Um, he needs to be in a home with older kids because he's still really kind of crazy puppy. Um, I mean, he's a little older for a puppy, but at 10 months, but he still at practice. Pretty, pretty silly and needs some training. <laughs> yes. He likes to go swimming. He's wet right now as the, another volunteer took him swimming in the lake um, just a few minutes ago. Does he like classical music? <laughs> they play music in some of the rooms sometimes for the animals. Um, when I came in here earlier, there was country music playing, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But, you a ball? Look at it. So, uh, what kind of breed is this guy? It's a mixed breed. I mean, I don't, who knows? Um, he came from South Carolina. We get dogs, seems like, pretty much weekly from the South. And, uh, he came in originally with his brother, who got adopted already. And he is actually normally in a foster home, um, but they had to go out of town this weekend. So he's spending the weekend here, and then he'll be going back to the foster home. And so if people wanted to come see him, they can come see him this weekend here. But then after that, they'd have to contact Baypath um, to set up a, a meet because he's in the foster home. Still to come on HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports update. We'll take you to the annual bocce throwdown at the Senior Center, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. I'm Kathleen Culler. On Saturday, October 13th at 11 a.m., the Hopkinton History Center will have archaeologist Dr. Eric Johnson present his findings on the Cheney Collection, Native American artifacts found on School Street. The artifacts are thousands of years old, and if you found an interesting artifact in your yard, like me, bring it, and Dr. Johnson will give you his opinion about its age and origin. One small item per person, please. I'll see you there. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller's volleyball continues to be on a roll. Here is a look at the latest happenings with the volleyball team and the other Hiller's fall sports teams. Free ball here for the girls. See what they can do with it. Jenna, Angie, back set to Mia. Cross court, nice put away from Mia. Hopkinton Hiller's girls volleyball is currently 6-0 on the season. Their last win was a sweep of Norwood. The Hillers volleyball team has grabbed four of their six wins via a sweep. Heading into their game on Friday, Hillers varsity volleyball is the last undefeated team left in the TVL. A check in on the other Hillers fall varsity teams. Hillers boys soccer is at four and two on the season. Girls soccer is at two wins, three losses and a tie. Hiller's football is 2-1 after a nice 28-6 road win this past Saturday in Norwood. Hiller's field hockey is at 2 wins, 4 losses, and a tie. Hiller's golf has 3 wins and no losses. Hiller's boys and girls cross country both stand at 2 wins and no losses. 
fifth annual bocce throwdown took place at the Hopkinton Senior Center. The annual contest allows the seniors, police, and fire to test their skills on the bocce courts. Here's a look at how this year's contest went. I'm going to reiterate what happens here. At the beginning of the game, or as we take different turns, and the Polino is thrown. Yep. The Polino is thrown, and it must go more than halfway down yes. the court. Indicated by those stakes. Those white posts, yep. and it ends up at least a foot in from the side yep. and at least a foot in from the back. Sure, so you don't have them up against the wall. and While the game is underway, however, it can go anywhere. It, it can get struck by another ball and get jammed in the corner or sure. hit into orbit, but on the original throw, foot, 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 foot. halfway. Gotcha. That's great. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're out here today with the uh, Polino, and you're gonna drop yeah. the ceremony. So what am I gonna do? Uh, hey, throw you gotta it? roll. You gotta throw it like Which like you way? mean it. Throw it that way. Okay. There you go. Good job. Okay. Nicely done. Get me out of here. Uh, this one a little bit of power there too. There's the Spock, but it's the wrong one, and Blue's still in. Look at this. They're just trying to Spock it. There it is. To Rivera, oh and he boy. squeaks out oh in there boy. for a three. Wow, there it is. Well, I kind of, I kind of think that he's playing the with them, and so that'll put it to thirteen to five. Yeah, you hear the trash they're talking about? Uh, they're here? talking a lot of trash. It's unbelievable. I see they're bringing a few more people in too. So. You're gonna make it to the next round. Uh, you gonna change it up a little bit, or you gonna keep with the same yeah, youngsters? The uh, same uh, same group is gonna play. Wow, that's yeah, a bold, yeah. bold move. Worried? It, worry isn't. I want courtesy, courtesy to the seniors. Allow them their chance to participate, and uh, they have a good team. You know, yes, they, they have do. a good team. So we did all right to close that game out. We did good. So the youngsters did well. Yeah, you're gonna like them. They're they're off for doing pots and pan duty for a while. They're, they uh, tested hose this morning in preparation, and uh, we might give them tomorrow a little leeway if things go well. We'll yeah, see. That's good. <laughs> they, they, they might uh, get an extra five minutes at lunch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks, All right, buddy. Great. Chief, thank you. Yes, so uh -oh. we got Amy Beck with us here, the interim director of the Senior Center right now. Amy, tell us about today's event. What, why is this so important? Why is this so important? Um, I would say just getting the police and fire, getting to know the seniors. It's a community involvement and just general good fun. Now this has been in planning for a couple of months. What was the buzz around today, uh, up at, leading up until today's event? Oh boy. Well, we're, we're uh, definitely thinking the seniors are going to pull their weight. Unfortunately, right now we're not doing so well. They mounted a nice little comeback on the last we game. did in the last game, and I'm expecting it this time around as well. So speaking of the newsletter, tell, tell everyone about the hilltop and how cool this is. Okay, well every month we send out a newsletter that lets you know what is happening at the Senior Center. We have a schedule, a daily schedule of our activities. We have, like I said, the exercise classes, any special events coming up, and we also daily have a lunch. Um, it's a $5 lunch for a full meal from salad and soup up to a hot meal or sandwiches and dessert. So you get quite a bit. Alright, so it looks like that the uh, police took over. And uh, didn't give the seniors much of a chance, no, you know? they didn't, but we made a rally in the first game, so we're sure pretty pleased. Oh, boy. That should be in. And Smith keeps fire alive. To get one more point, it could be a tie. It looks yep. like fire may have tied this up. Two tied points back up. for the red team. We have a new game here, 11-11. Wow, you got all the choke calls from, from behind us. There's some chanting That's going on. That's our play. That's it. Uh, uh, last Brennan's hanging his head. No, no pressure, new guy. Here we go. That's what they're saying. Oh, and that sails the police oh fate. Red team takes it 15 to 11. We've also, by the way, someone has very generously from the police department offer to get a big trophy that we can have every year and put the name on it nice. so right yeah. now this is yours i'll let chief uh, <laughs> i'll let you have it and um oh no wait a minute. who won here yeah fire department yes <laughs> oh, <laughs> here let me tell you we won yeah <laughs>
<laughs> nice work, gentlemen. Way to go. So Congratulations. We had that one year last year. We had a little slip, but this is year three, I believe. So very well done. Here you go. Look at that. Pass that around. <laughs> Where is Chief Lee? I lost track of him here for a second here. I lost track of Chief Lee for a second. Oh, man. Oh, nice. so, so, Chief, this does feel a little good? This is feels it? real nice. I'm hey. looking forward to writing my annual report again next year to be able to talk about Bocce once again. So. That's fantastic. Bocce yeah. Throwdown 2018 is done. Red team winning. Blue team. Well, they're, they're still here. They're crying, but fake news is very possible. Well, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Thanks to the uh, Hopkins Senior Center for sponsoring this event. And uh, thank everyone for coming out. We will see you next year. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channel. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, September 28th at 5 p.m., the Hillers girls volleyball team takes on the Holliston Panthers live on HCAM Ed. And at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts sit down with David Phillips of the Central Public House on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, October 1st at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod introduces us to the Hopkinton's new Our Time Memory Cafe on a new episode of Senior View. On Wednesdays, October 3rd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls volleyball team takes on the Norton Lancers live on HCAM Ed. And at 7 p.m., author John Hodgson gives a presentation on Richard Porter, America's first black celebrity, on a new HCAM TV special. And on Thursday, September 4th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers football versus Ashland game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to HCAM.TV connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, HCAM.TV, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the new Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Down at the high school and middle school fields, the annual Lumberjack Show took place, allowing those of all ages to test out their skills. So another beautiful day at Hopkinton Family Day, and you got the uh, Lumberjack Show taking place once again. Uh, seems like a good turnout today. How's everything going? Good. The weather, of course, is in our favor. A little bit hot, but you know what? Remember back to the 300th anniversary, we had ice pellets in the air. So we'll take this any day. We got them lined up. The axe throwing, of course, is always the most popular because everybody thinks they're going to nail it, and then they get over there in reality. But there's some good people over there. The sawing events, we got a couple little kids events. Try to get something for little kids in Lumberjack competition is tough. 
So it's good. We've got a good turnout. It's been steady. It's coming down a little at a time. So we're happy with it. Yeah, it's a good turnout. At the high school fields, Hopkinton Family Day took place featuring activities for the kids, food trucks, live music, and a whole lot more. Hey, welcome to um, Hopkinton Family Day. This is great, another great turnout, a fabulous weather. We had bad weather all week, and now we've got this great weather. I'm getting ready to uh, go in the dunk tank for a half an hour. That's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun. It's just great it's having the community get together on a day like this. And it's, uh, it's, it's what we always pray for, good weather and uh, good friends and a good community. And uh, so much going on today. A lot of people uh, came out to enjoy all the events. Um, are people enjoying having all these things going on in one day? I think so. There was a great turnout this morning for um, the uh, the closing ceremonies for the center school and um, and poly arts today. It was it was one of the most well attended poly arts. In the world. There was great food. There was great great people there buying and selling stuff. It was it was uh, it's, it's been a, a great day all around. Especially since we've had such bad weather. You know, we pray for all the people down south uh, dealing with Hurricane Florence. But because of that storm down there, we've got a nice high pressure system giving us some great weather. And are you looking forward to the dunk tank? It might be a little refreshing. No, I'm not looking forward to the dunk tank, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's all in good fun. It's for the Lions, which is a great organization. Colin and Libby Hurley, give him a little hand. Come on. Sounded good, guys. Sounded really good.